Radio Valley 99.9 FM tune every time say ooh ooh Not every day but once in a week voices of note get up and speak they tell stories these voices you know listen up people listen up to the show mm. for voices that move and voices that shape this is the show this is uh, my mixtape and speaking of people who shape opinions we have a genuine um, pioneer uh, trailblazer here as our guest here. Here on my mixtape on Radio Valley 99.9 FM. My name is Soup. Uh, behind the controls always is NC, who is presently not behind the control. He's behind the microphone, adjusting the microphone, and now he's back at, at the controls. <laughs> Thank you, NC. Right. Um, and you're obviously wondering who our guest is. If you've been following uh, the, the Facebook post, then you would know that our guest today is uh, none other than uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Limpo Dishunwangbo. Such a pleasure to have you here, La. My pleasure being here with you, Soup. Last. Always a pleasure. Right. Um, <clears throat> once we, we put up the Facebook post uh, mm-hmm. saying you're going to be the guest, we had an overwhelming response. I mean, at least on my pages, I had uh, an overwhelming response. I have, so many people were looking forward to this. And I also have to say this, uh, that normally it's very difficult to get uh, uh, people from a political background or in politics on this show. Um, generally because uh, politicians somehow usually tend to be very reserved uh, about their opinions and co- and they're cautious. Um, so it is uh, extremely overwhelming for us, I think, in many ways to have an actively serving politician here uh, on the show. Thank you for being probably our first... Uh, well, we had uh, Lynchin Singh Dobge when he was a uh, uh, Lynchin, mm-hmm. and we had uh, the previous uh, health minister as well, uh, Lemuno Wonchu. Mm-hmm. Um, but from the present government, you're probably the first. Yes, you are the first. Yes, la. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, there you go, uh, trailblazer. You've opened new ground. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Already. Last. Oh, so tell us, Lemuno, what's uh, keeping you busy these days? I, I know there must be ten thousand things, but just. Pick some of the things that are uh, keeping you busy these days. I think many things. Um, if I talk about uh, my day to day, I uh, started my day with um, had breakfast with my son. Very important part of my life, oh, my okay. journey. Um, and then, <coughs> then the usual um, couple of meetings in the office. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, passionately working on uh, the health flagship that you must have heard about. That in the twelve five year plan, mm-hmm. we have a. Um, flagship that is mostly targeted towards providing health services in our community uh, to the Georg level. So uh, we are redesigning and designing actually the blueprint of that flagship, which be, which will be submitted for approval very soon. Nice. Um, um, and then uh, towards the end of the afternoon, had a couple of meetings with my program officers just to touch touch base on where they are in terms of their work. So we have within the ministry what we call a a monthly coordination meeting that I do with uh, most of my executive uh, staff. And then at least once a month, I try to meet with the program officer to touch base with them as well in terms of what they are doing. Okay. Um, And then uh, late afternoon, I'm here uh, spending my time with the very famous soup Mm -hmm. in the Radio Valley. So... That's my day for today. Right, okay. Um, <coughs> already, I mean, one of the things that I will, I will pick up on uh, over there, uh, and this is purely because we had this very engaging conversation with the previous mm. uh, health minister. Mm. Um, I would imagine those pretty big... Uh, oh, sorry, no, that was the previous education minister. No one, sorry, I got that mixed up. Mm. In any case... Um, uh, so who was the previous health minister? Lebutani Wanchu. Lebutani yes. But that, those are big issues to uh, fill as well. Uh. Um, but here's the thing about that I need to be uh, very clear about uh, when it comes <coughs> to uh, Lebutani Chen. Um, one of the things that I mentioned, in fact, the most important thing that I mentioned, at least uh, for me at that point, mm. uh, in the social media post, was that not, all politicians are, you know, serious people. Mm. Some of them are ready to laugh mm. and make others laugh mm. as well. And you did precisely that, you know, straight after walking into this uh, 
studio right mm. now a while ago mm. uh, lembo looked at these frames that were mm. uh, around the, and we have them all around of course you on youtube you don't see them and you on radio you obviously don't see them uh, the youtube people you'll see just a few of a few frames behind me but uh, the entire room has a lot of frames and lembo was uh, remarking that uh, what is it do i get one of these <laughs> do your guests get one of mm. these um, so uh, nice to start off on that uh, mm. lighter lighter vein mm. but obviously uh, we want to know more about you mm. uh lambo wongmo is uh, obviously many of us know you are one of the first uh, you know women on that position mm. um following closely after lambo doshun mm. um i want to get into that and mm. ask you about how you feel about that mm. but um, for the moment as a person most people don't really know the edition wong mo forget mm. the limbo the, mm. the, the edition wong mo um would it be fair to say that you have a funny bone i think so last <laughs> so you you like to laugh a lot uh i would say i'm not scared of laughing right uh, i think that's I'm, well put yes i think I'm that's i'm not scared of bringing out the child in me right once in a while mm-hmm. so but obviously the position that you <coughs> that that you occupy right now does put up some restrictions mm. to, to a certain extent you need to be a little cautious sometimes right you mm. can't afford to be as uh, gregarious and open as as you might have been mm. earlier right um tell us about you limba what where were you born what kind of family you grew up in uh i was born uh, here in thimphu Nas. um and uh, and i'm i think it's okay to say i was born in 1975 yes <laughs> um here in thimbu valley in chubachu actually if you come down to just below uh, rta there are four traditional buildings i was born in one of that houses that okay. are still standing on its original shape and form yes um i started my early education of course uh, in in lungden zampa mm-hmm. uh, i finished my uh, high school there i am one among five of us uh, in the family we are four daughter and a son um, well, actually five daughter but my older sister passed away nice. so i am third in the line um, i have two younger sister below me right then uh, that was my primary school journey and then i uh, went on to do my plus 2 uh, 9 and 10 in in punaka those were amazing times uh, punaka that time was one of the best school to go to mm-hmm. so i went there with uh, my best friend and the reason being my best friend was going to punaka so i said i also want to go with her so mm. i went there and we are still very good friends Thus. um and then i did my 11 and 12 in yhs mm. um and then after that um, i uh, got an opportunity to go to united states uh, to do my undergraduate yes uh, and you know coming from um um bhutan uh, where there is a lot of emphasis or pressure to be a doctor or a engineer i also wanted to uh, pursue my career in medicine mm. so um i did a six year course uh, in cardiovascular um and then you know i really didn't um, enjoy being in the hospital so then i uh, okay, just just a second uh, limbo oh. you did your undergraduate in cardiovascular science mm. but you said it was a six year course yes wow six year course so you know i mean that what it tells me is that you were actually going to become a doctor is it yes yes true that right. was definitely my aspiration when i left uh, uh, bhutan to right. become a doctor and to actually become the first cardiologist uh, in bhutan mm. uh but then you know i had uh, after i did two years of uh, training in in children's hospital in boston Lust. and i absolutely didn't like being in the hospital <laughs> right that wasn't my cup of tea okay. and then i realized you know and i had a scholarship actually to go and do my medical doctorate in cardiology mm. so i said oh you know this is not something i want to do for the rest of my life so so rather than break new ground in cardio or becoming a cardiologist uh, you know the first cardiologist mm. you decided you'd become the first and only bhutanese to go to the Yale School of uh, Public Health. I guess so. Where, yes. <laughs> <laughs> where you did your masters. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, how difficult was it? I mean, I don't know if too many people at least there is no other Bhutanese who's, who's been uh, who's enrolled there. True. So, true. Right. Um uh, so I was How, how did that happen? <laughs> 
so I actually had a scholarship to do my MD and then at the very last minute I decided no that's not my cup of tea I want to do something else mm. and I looked around and um, I I fell in basically I fell in love with the curriculum at Yale um, I loved it the way it was designed uh, it was very much uh, what I wanted to do what I wanted to study okay so um, I applied and I got in nice. uh, but I must say because I was preparing to go to med school I had to sit through through this grueling eight hour uh, entrance exam called MCAT. Wow, eight and hour yes, exam. Yes, and I uh, was very lucky and I did fairly well. So mm. I think uh, that actually helped me uh, get into Yale, <laughs> last, last. I guess. And my a lot of luck. Okay, <laughs> a lot of luck. But I mean, did, did your undergraduate studies contribute in any way? Was it helpful? Yes, of course. I think uh, because, uh, of course, they look at your undergraduate grades as well. Right, right. And I graduated uh, top 5% of my class with wow. uh, Magna Cum Laude, highest honor. So I think that kind of uh, was a blessing as well. But who, who does that? I mean, you, you graduate <laughs> at the top of your class, more or less, and then you decide, yeah, I, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But then in the end, you know, uh, to me, something that I really believed in is is that you have to be excited about what you are doing. True. I and agree. You want to get up every morning. I was asked by my parents why you don't want to go and pursue medicine. Mm. And I told them, I remember having this conversation with my mother, late mother. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I want to get up in the morning and get excited about where I'm going and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be dreading myself out of the bed and then going to work and saying, oh, this is another boring day. Nice. I want to get excited about it. And mm. I really wanted to do something that I'm very passionate about. Nice. And I said, public health uh, is what I want to do. Okay. And it excites me. And this is what uh, I see myself doing. Um, so that was the decision. Uh, so, Just so far. for the benefit of us, uh, the ignorant and the uninitiated, mm. what exactly do you mean? Uh, what does the term public health entail? I mean, mm. briefly, as simply as you can. So for me, um, within the public health arena, I have specialized in what we call um, uh, epidemiology. Okay. And, and that is basically studying the trend of diseases, diseases yes. uh, how it spreads, how you control through public uh, designing uh, research, designing interventions, and also designing systems. Okay. So my focus over the years have been in uh, building health systems. Uh, okay. All right, so which so, makes it, you know, perfectly logical that that you are where you are now. I, I right? think so. It's a perfect fit. All right, <laughs> it certainly seems so. Right. Anyway, okay. So you you how long was that that uh, master's course? Uh, uh, that was a two-year program. Okay. Um, so uh, I graduated in two thousand and seven. Last, and then. Yes. Then what? Uh, then I think, uh, I was actually, interestingly, I was thinking about joining government. Um, then things came around and um, um, I had a consulting assignment. And then again, I fell in love with consulting, not, you know, dictating your own schedule and, mm. you know, you didn't have to do nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly you can plan your own schedule mm -hmm. and, and that was exciting and it was very time-based, time-bound, you know, intensive and you do your assignment and you deliver. So that was exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I kind of fell into the consulting thing. Um, I, I it pays well as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no. And um, I started doing probably two assignments here. Um, and then I got picked up in, in the international uh, consulting roster and mm. then um, by the time I decided to join politics I was basically uh, looking at around eight countries in the region as mm. a technical advisor yeah right so. you worked in eight different countries yes wow that's yeah. quite an experience to have yeah. I mean like as you start your career path yeah. you work in you know all these different places mm. um, and again working as a consultant uh, no less again mm. um, I would the way I see it is, you're getting paid well. Yes. You're getting to travel yes. and experience different yes. cultures. Why would you want to do politics? You know, why would you want to do politics? But we'll keep that question for the moment mm -hmm. aside, mm -hmm. just preparing you mm -hmm. mentally so that you can answer the question. Uh, we'll delve into your playlist first. Mm -hmm. um, the first song on your playlist is uh, Can't Have Falling In Love uh, by Elvis. Mm -hmm. now, Please do tell us, why is this on your playlist? I think this is, uh, you know, you, you have your life, uh, when you first fall in love, and mm. uh, that's a moment where you can't, uh, uh, that, uh, that 
experience is still there and still gives you the butterflies. Okay. Um, so that is my experience, and ah. I think this is a song that uh, when I first went on a date, mm-hmm. that was the song that was playing, and it's ah, okay. been there in my head for the longest time. So this is from from your teen years, then. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. I, I can't even remember. Seventeen or eighteen. <laughs> Last, I can't even remember what song I was into on my first date. Uh, it, it must have been something heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Last, okay, so let's uh, check it out then. Um, <clears throat> Can't Help Falling in Love uh, by Elvis and then we'll come back uh, and continue this conversation with uh, the Mudition Momo. Don't matter if you're high on a mountain or low in an alley You've always got a And for those of you tuned in late, you are listening to my mixtape here on Radio Valley 99.9 FM. I think that was a little quick. I was in the nine. I meant 99.9 FM. Uh, my name is Soup. And my guest today here on my mixtape is uh, the current health minister, uh, Limbo Dijun Wongbo. Right, Limbo, I was asking you a while ago, just before the break. I mean, you have a nice cushy job. You get travel places. Um, you're getting well paid. Um, sounds like the dream, dream life, you know, professional life. And then you decided, uh, okay, uh, let me step into you know, the political arena. Mm. Uh, please explain. Be curious. I think um, when I think back, you know, there's not a very... Uh, I think I was approached uh, both by uh, Lin Chui and... Yes. and and Dr. Tandi, okay. uh, both of whom I have a huge respect mm-hmm. um, uh, as a person, um, wonderful human beings. And they said, the Chen, why do you want to come on board? Because uh, health is on the agenda. So I would say one uh, catalyst that uh, drove me to decide uh, to join po- politics is the person who, the two person that asked me. Okay. Both of whom I have a huge respect for. And the second one is, of course, I... Uh, you know, uh, they put in an argument that I couldn't uh, really uh, deny, uh, resist Lust. because they said, you know, you're all for health. You want to do something for the health. You're doing, you're working in around eight countries in the region, looking at their health system. Why don't you do something for Bhutan? And, you know, why don't you join our team? And we, our main agenda is health. And, and so I think that is the one that sort of pushed me into um Uh, okay. taking up politics oh, to, okay. to really uh, look at health system um, to reform health system um, and really continue this uh, legacy that uh, uh, his majesties have dream of uh, uh, dreamt of in uh, for for health system in Bhutan so Bus. Um, then that really makes a whole lot of sense mm-hmm. I mean because um, you are in the right position mm-hmm. I mean the very fact that you were you've you know, closely associated and know very well about eight different uh, health systems in the region mm. puts you in a certain position where you're able to um, have this, almost this bird's eye view, I think, of, of everything that's happening in the in the region and therefore can bring a different uh, approach or different um, percep- uh, perception, I think, mm. to, to mm. towards health. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess that that makes a whole lot of sense. Mm. And... Um, but obviously at that time you did not know that you know Nyamra Chokpa was going to win true right. uh, the driving into the uncertainty so as i call it okay know? but um, even the i think the journey itself was uh, to me was uh, was a wonderful experience that Uh, you know, knowing my own community, uh, going around, talking to people, what their concerns are. That, w- that was wonderful because mm. um, I'm a very people person, mm-hmm. I must say. Uh, which and is <laughs> clearly apparent, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I love talking to people. I love doing research. Mm. Um, I looked at, like you said, I had a bird's eye view of what is happening uh, in the healthcare arena. And then I knew... what are some of the potentials that we can actually enhance health services in Bhutan um, and and continue our legacy. You know, if you look at health system in Bhutan, it's very unique globally, I must say. Mm. You know, uh, we have a health system that is, uh, you know, protected by our constitution mm. and has been 
successively guided and nurtured by our successive monarchs. Right. And then I think there is nothing that is in the world that has the same design. Okay. Um, and it was something that is very exciting for us to look at. You know, we have done fairly well in terms of primary health care, mm-hmm. distributing Extremely the successful coverage, in fact. Yes, you know. Uh, and then to, to look at now with the tertiary level care, how best can we design tertiary level care in this same model of primary health care. Mm-hmm. So I think things that we are doing at the moment will be really pioneering some of the interventions in the region. Okay. So that is something, the research part, the intervention part that excites me every day. So Okay. Uh, is that part of the health flagship? Uh, uh, it's part of the health flagship uh, one and then uh, part of the overall health reforms as well. Last, okay. Uh, I definitely want to get mm-hmm. further into this discussion about mm-hmm. the health flagship. Um, but Let's not make it so heavy, you know. Yeah, it's still early in the game. Um, I want to talk more about uh, you as a person because Mm. uh, I imagine there's so many people out there who want to know you better. Mm. Um, One of the things that uh, obviously we were extremely careful about is uh, um, we decided, you know, the toilets, everything needs to be spick and span Mm. because I hear you're that sort of person. You're very clean. (laughs) Pick and span. You're obsequiously clean at home. You're, um, you ha- you need everything to be in place. Uh, is that true? Uh, yes, I think I'm guilty of that. <laughs> guilty of that. Okay, last. I am. I am. I think even as a kid, I was a very highly organized person. Mm. So if you tell me what is on my desktop, mm. I can tell you exactly in what order it is. The folders. <laughs> right. Uh, so th- that is the level of organizational skills that I have. Okay. So I would tell you, you know, if you want something in my house, I can tell you exactly where to go and get it and right. you will find that thing in that place. Right, right. <laughs> um, I'm scary. kind of like that. I'm, I'm kind of like that myself. Only that my bedroom, I mean, my toilet, my kitchen has to be spick and span as well. Uh. But my bedroom is a mess. But I know exactly where Wait. everything is. <laughs> and if yeah. you organize that mess, oh. then I won't be able to find Trouble. my stuff. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, similar in some ways, very different in, in mm. uh, certain ways also. No, but then uh, the thing is this. Uh, um, you are organized. So I, I would imagine even if uh, I, I think your, let's say, your songs on your laptop, for mm. example, let's mm. say your music, um, do they all start with, capitals i mean are they neatly organized that way yes yes, yes. i kind of felt <laughs> that way <laughs> last okay um i am also told uh, that you're a bit of a foodie yes right okay so the health minister is a foodie by the way <laughs> um what kind of food do, do you like i mean I, I imagine there are many but what's the thing that 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 you really enjoy Right now, right now, um, I really, um, I I would say, um, really traditional food. Okay. Uh, say, uh, I I really like ko. Okay. Um, ko. Ko. Whoa. I I love ko. Right. Um, love lot of things with thingy in it. Right. Uh, but. You know, as as you matured, I think yeah, your yeah, yeah. palate also tends yes, to mature. Yes, when I was yes. a teenager, I lived on pizza. Okay. The, everything, every time I would go out, we would land up eating pizza. So mm-hmm. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Then I went through a phase of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> mm. But now, not so much. But now, it's back to the traditional. But okay. I'm not only a foodie, but I'm a great cook too. You know? I do b- believe that. You <laughs> love cooking for yes. friends, family. Yes. You like having them over and... Yes. and your yes. range of, of uh, cooking expertise is uh, spread through different cuisines uh, yes. as well. Yes. Um, what do you like cooking? Anything? I, I, mm. Anything. I, mm. I'm very adventurous. I like to try new recipes. Right. Um, I like to try new vegetables. Mm. Um, I, I love baking. Um, I like to bake different kind of breads with... I tried so many, mixing so many flowers. Okay. Recently I did with buckwheat and cassava flour that came out quite well. Um, okay. So, 
and then I make a very divine whiskey ribs that I'm actually within my family I'm famous for. Last, what it's, was that again? Whiskey ribs. Yes. All right. It's, it's a rib that okay. is marinated in uh, K5 well, whiskey. Okay. What kind of ribs? Pork ribs. Pork ribs. Okay. Pork ribs yes. marinated in K5 whiskey. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, so you marinate it overnight? Yes. Last, okay. Yes. And uh, what do you do? Do you do, you, do you bake it? Do you roast it? Do I roast it for, okay. for for a long time. And, okay. and you can really feel the meat sort of falling apart from the bones. Mm. So it's really yummy. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hunger pangs now. <laughs> can we stop the show and uh, go on to a, a lunch break of some sort? Because... <laughs> uh, uh, I love food as well and I like to experiment as well. Yes. So if I go any place, I will definitely try lo the local mm -hmm. cuisine, mm -hmm. whatever is out there. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be the cockroaches and the ants and whatever it is. I, I, I wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try anything. Um, <clears throat> but there's one thing that where, again, we're very different. Uh. Um, I'm a lousy cook, terrible cook. I kind of guessed that. <laughs> right. Um, forget about other people. Mm. What I cook, even I myself can't eat most of the time. Which I is, know someone who's like that. Okay, last. <laughs> um, which, which is why I end up eating in restaurants most of the place. Mm. Kind of unhealthy, but uh, well, I have to. Mm. No choice. Uh, that's my life. Right. Oh, uh, you were telling me uh, that you are extremely organized, mm. and from from your childhood itself, you were you, mm. you were like that. Um, I am told that as a child, you were also fiercely independent. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Very independent as. Very independent. Yes, you yeah. liked having things your own way, and you were fine by yourself. Yes. You didn't need uh, people to take care of you. Yeah. Um, where did that come from? I mean, is, is, is was it something that you picked up from your parents, or you know, it was it just the way it was? I, I would say I think actually when I look at all my siblings. Um, that the level of independence mm. uh, in our thinking, in what we do, um, I think we all have that. It's mm. quite universal in in at least in my family, uh, because we were raised with uh, by uh, my late mother, Plus. who is uh, a very strict, mm. and she always believed uh, that you have to be responsible for your action. Plus. Okay. You know? okay. So um, I remember my my decision, for example, to join politics. Mm. I shared the first thing when I decided actually to join. I went and told my father. I said I'm thinking about joining politics. Mm. Uh, my father didn't say anything, and then the next morning he came down and he said, "You know what? Uh, you know, joining politics is not. Uh, it's it's a huge responsibility." You are going to serve the nation, so it's a huge responsibility. I hope you have thought through this. Um, and I said, yes, I did. Um, and then he said, okay, then we are here for you. Okay. And interestingly, uh, you know, throughout my campaign time, mm -hmm. uh, I was all alone. And uh, of course, my best friend was with me and we were going around. Uh, my father uh, n never went with me okay. anywhere. Okay. Very, very unique to, right. you know, others where there's lots of yeah, participation yeah, yeah. Yes, from yes. family. Yes. And I, I went around and a lot of people knew him, uh, mm. who he was, because he lived all his life in Dimbu. Right. So I would go and see and introduce myself and they would say, oh, you're Mr. Pemsering's son, daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, where is he? How is he? How come he's not with you? You mm. know, he should come around because he knows a lot of people than I do. Mm. Then I came home and I told him, uh, Appa, I think you should come with me, you know. There are a lot of people who knows you, no? Mm. And and my father said, you know, this is what you have taken upon yourself. And if you want to serve the nation, you should be able to do this on your own. Wow. So I think that's th that. This is an example of how we are raised mm. uh, to be uh, independent thinkers, right? Uh, and be responsible for our own actions. Mm. My mom always used to say that if you break something, it's your responsibility. You better fix it. Mm. <laughs> nice, nice. So it's obviously so the I upbringing. Think it is. Yes, 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 yes it's, it's I think so. I think so. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. I had, uh, you know, the uh, opportunity to, you know, spend um, two years in Sherabse where, you know, your mm. older brother was uh, doing his 11, 12 as yes. well. Uh, and uh, got to know him quite well. Mm. We, we we were good friends and still are. Mm. Um, 
and yes he was that sort of person as well you know he was always different and in a good way yeah. i don't mean in a bad way in a, in a good way um and uh, sure enough he has uh, proven his metal mm-hmm. as well uh, in fact when you uh, stepped into the political arena i hate to say this uh, lama but i didn't know who you were mm. and my reference point was uh, one your father mm. and two your brother mm. you know and then oh okay you know and then it, it kind of made sense that, okay okay so mm. um she obviously comes mm. from from a reputable family mm. um and that's how i got to know more about mm. about, about you but otherwise prior to that uh, i i didn't know so mm. and it's uh, n- so refreshing to hear that you know your father actually mm. told you why should i go you know it's your decision and you you handle yes. it it's your responsibility Ah, that's that's so refreshing because over here, mm. generally the trend is mm. like you said, you have the entire family behind you, mm. and uh, it does become a family affair. They, everybody's uh, rooting uh, for the person from the family who is you know stepping up uh, to True. the plate, um, and if you have a different choice, I mean, like, was there anybody in your family who was not a Nyamrup supporter? possible possible why possible, not okay. definitely definitely, Last, definitely right and and, and and it would be cool with uh, yeah, with you or yeah, anybody else yeah, because right. it it is your personal choice you cannot right. impose something on, on to others you know but i i do want to stand corrected that uh, that doesn't mean that i didn't have support from my family right right right, right. they did but I mean, they knew their boundaries uh-huh. you know they're very clear about what uh, i should step up to uh but do you come home my to see my father there you know if you have some problems i could go to him and then discuss mm. and he would guide you he would be that moral compass in you mm. to to say this is right and this is wrong and this is how you should do it you okay. know so i think that uh, that's such a wonderful thing actually to have that that backup knowing it's, that there's somebody there behind you and every time you you go through life and mm. uh, my my father's advice to us and not just my father my my siblings my brother they always say whatever you just decide we are there behind you 100% nice uh, Um, so then you are not scared to fail mm. you know because you know that there is a group there you can bank on and mm. and and it's a wonderful thing to have and i think i am in many ways blessed uh, uh, to have that family uh, Thus, support i think yes very mm. blessed very blessed in fact i, I don't want to make any comparisons with my family mm. but <laughs> but i'm this couldn't possibly happen in, in my family i'm like <laughs> what happened now okay, i might as well be uh, vocal about it uh, what happened is my entire family is the bkp supporters oh. because um, my sister's husband my brother in law was a bkp candidate mm. from from ha mm. and not only that my older sister mm. was uh, mm. in fact uh, the vice uh, pres of mm. uh, bkp mm. and uh, you know we come to the last elections uh, mm. and uh, the entire family is mm. obviously bkp mm. and then like you know when when the elections come up they're like uh, okay so you better go and vote huh? you mm. better go and vote i'm like yeah sure obviously mm. um and they're like okay so you know who to put for right i said yeah i i know who to put for and mm. i know everybody's bkp i said yeah i'm a pdp supporter <laughs> <laughs> oh my sister didn't like it one bit <laughs> yeah so i i i was a bkp supporter in fact of uh, myself but uh, somehow um somehow i i just felt more connected to to, to the pdp after mm-hmm. a while and i made very made my choice very clear i mean i didn't have anything to hide i didn't feel yes. uh, awkward about anything but <laughs> it was difficult <laughs> yes it was it was quite difficult for my family to digest mm. i mean some of the members in the family were like okay well, fine cool that's that's your choice but some were like no man you can't do that <laughs> <laughs> right okay mm. but let's head on back into your playlist mm. uh, and we'll delve into mm. um you mm. and your current work mm. and the stuff some of the things mm. that that you're doing um so okay your playlist uh, we move on to john denver and normally when when we see john denver most people think okay uh, country roads mm-hmm. um but no you've gone with uh, sunshine on my shoulders yes. um tell us about this why is this I, i think nothing personal but i think that's a song that really uh, lifts me up okay um it just you know i like to listen to the song um in the morning mm-hmm. uh, it just lifts your spirits up so that's okay. that's the only reason no no other connections last last <laughs> Oh, just yeah speaking of which uh, again just uh, something personal um i remember what song i was really into 
when i went for my first date yes mm. it was a song by the scorpions oh. that went rock you like a hurricane <laughs> <laughs> so that was what i was into uh last were okay you, were you driving a harley davidson uh, uh, no I, i i didn't have a harley i didn't even ride a bike at that at that oh. time uh I was much too young but still yeah, <laughs> that was the stuff i was doing uh last anyway um just before we um get in there i just need to um do this lemma this is a uh, a set of a hoodie and mm. a t-shirt that comes to you courtesy of uh, karma kora wow. um karma kora by the way um, design uh these original designs um mm. so they have totally bhutanese designs uh, mm. on them this the hoodie and the t-shirt and uh, have been around karma kora has been around for quite mm. a while so this comes to you courtesy of karma kora if i can just get this last mm. yes thank you i was actually eyeing one of the paintings on the wall but i i'll settle for karma kora you know the <laughs> many of these paintings actually are featured on karma kora mm. designs mm. now so you have a portable uh, thing why why keep that just in your, in your house <laughs> um i know you have many things in your house uh, all sorts of things that you won't find in other people's houses um some stuff we will get into that later but um head on to your playlist and then we'll come back and uh, talk about these things as well yes okay so uh sunshine on my shoulders uh, by john denver who by the way it appears did come here sometime in the 1980s as a tourist uh to bhutan unbeknownst to most of us wow. but i got this first hand from the guide who did who who guided him wow. anyway all right so here we go then sunshine on my shoulders don't matter if you're high on a mountain or low in an alley you've always got a I plead guilty. I plead guilty. NC my board operator just notified me that uh, we've uh, spent the major part of uh, 40 minutes talking and we've had only two uh, song breaks uh, up until now. But that's just been the kind of conversation we've been having here on my my mixtape, a thoroughly engaging mm-hmm. conversation uh with a thoroughly engaging uh, guest I must mm-hmm. say. Uh, obviously like I said, you're very independent uh, uh and that was clear from your from your early years and the but the very fact that you know you were studying uh cardiovascular science and then you after six years you said no I don't want this mm-hmm. and you, then you move into public health mm-hmm. um you want to join government and then all of a sudden you think no okay consulting let's do this mm-hmm. and you're doing that that's going fine and all of a sudden you think okay uh hmm the right place for me to be would be in a position of uh, decision making mm-hmm. and using what I have right mm-hmm. and politics perfect uh, mm-hmm. uh, and that's where you ended up mm-hmm. it's just worked out perfectly for you I mm-hmm. think uh, right now um so as the health minister mm. and that too it may sound a little cliche to say that mm. but you know a woman minister mm. which in the history of this country has been rare mm. you the second woman mm. minister ever how does that make you feel wonderful right okay <laughs> i wasn't looking wonderful. for a one word answer actually <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonderful but uh, at the same time challenging of course right. ministry of health uh, as you know is the uh, i would say at least second uh, largest ministries uh, mm-hmm. on top of that uh, uh, in the capacity of the health minister i also look uh, i'm the chairperson of uh, five autonomous agencies Last. uh so that comes with uh, the chair mm-hmm. um, so but so far i think uh, um, having had done some consulting work for ministry of health i know the team i'm working with um, um uh, my my executives uh, program officers uh, so we have a very good uh, professional relationship so that that of course makes my life easier okay um, last last okay cool uh, but here's the other thing um again i was talking about you know your sense of independence mm. but you are also in a position right now mm. where you know you may be independent on a personal level mm. but on a professional level 
you, there's a lot of people to work with mm. and a lot of sensitivities mm. and all all of that to to um be aware of mm. um is it in any way being proving to be a little constructive mm. this this environment for you mm. or or are you fine uh, I, how's it, how's it working i think out? i think you probably need to redefine the independence Lust. um independence in the sense i'm independent in my thinking right given the right argument so ah. i'm also open to ideas mm. but i must be convinced i i truly believe in um evidence based planning i'm a true believer of evidence based planning um and this is where i hope uh, the ministry will also head towards is is evidence based planning we have quite a lot of data to look at it and that's the researcher part of me talking here um and then you you know when you do research you have a hypothesis but with with evidence and studies uh, you do divert from your hypothesis mm-hmm. which is okay which mm-hmm. is still uh, within the sound framework mm-hmm. of doing research so that's how i would uh, define myself as not when i say independent doesn't mean i will do everything on my own you have to coexist you have you are interdependent by nature mm-hmm. as human beings You're right. and <clears throat> and i think i'm very much a part of that ecosystem as well so um you know some <clears throat> someone who's far older than us mm. um knows you 3 mm. days ago told me in almost the same words this thing about you mm. said you can have an argument with her mm. and she will respect your opinion as long as it is evidence based mm. and she will respect the fact that you are entitled to your opinion as mm. well and she will not take your argument personal Yes. That's yes. that's what that person told me. And sure enough, uh, you were tested to the, to that in in your own words uh, yes. as well. Yes. Um which again is quite refreshing to hear from a decision maker mm. like a minister. Mm. Um because some people especially in decision making positions can be very <coughs> obstinate uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and stubborn. <laughs> It's uh, one of the things that uh, that I uh you know joke about sometimes mm. and although it's not funny is that you know in bhutan we are famed for our ecosystem mm. um i think in timpu it's not the ecosystem that's where we're most successful it's it's the ego system that <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we're, we're very mm. successful mm. with uh and then to have a decision maker mm. like yourself mm. you know to have that sort of attitude is is so refreshing um all right so tell us about this uh the health flagship program mm. Mm. what just broadly i know i know it's it runs deep it, mm. it's a, mm. it's broad as well but briefly could you just but the whole the whole objective or behind this health flagship is to reach communities if you look at today lots of services are in thimphu jdwnrh You're right so although we say our healthcare is free mm-hmm. in, in technically it is not free because mm. if you're coming from sakten to come and avail services here in thimphu mm-hmm. then there is a cost to it right uh, so many people uh, cannot afford that ah and, okay and, last uh, afford that one affordability second the conveniences you know when they come to thimphu they have to have a place to stay which they don't have sometimes mm. so there are a lot of other logistical challenges as well mm. so what they then do is they defer their treatment mm-hmm. so now what we are trying to do through the flagship is to really decentralize the service delivery okay so uh, you know somebody who wants to do endoscopy mm-hmm. for example they don't have to come to thimphu or mongar or gilifu to the regional hospitals but they could actually get endoscopy services staying in your own district Lust. not having to travel Lust. because okay. moment you travel you know you don't have the support network mm. you don't have the financial resources right. so although in one hand we can say oh health is free but then there are a lot of other costs that are associated with availing these services mm. so what we feel is it's time to really decentralize health delivery services and reach not just the basic health care of treating a diarrhea disease but even cancer screening can be reached at the district level mm. so then they can avail these services and these flagship would also have a preventive aspect to it so not only treating the patient but actually empowering 
the patient with information on how to prevent diseases how do you take care of yourself so it's a it's really at the end of the day a very comprehensive mm. package of services mm. that you will be able to access within staying within your district Nice. not having to travel right so that's right. the overall idea behind the health flagship loss which is a gargantuan task i mm. think uh, of course we've uh, succeeded extremely well mm. as a country in mm. terms of um, primary health care mm. um, but that's far easier right la yes, la, yes. right the minute you talk about tertiary health care and all of that stuff mm. it, it gets complicated there's True. this cost True. involved infrastructure True. all of that and of course one thing that does help is is the spread of you know information yeah. and technology yeah. now in in this age that that might help as well um but hats off hats off i mean yeah. because i do understand that like, we have a health system and i need people out there to to understand this yeah. as well. we have a health system that is really in many ways a true blessing yes. from above yes. it is a blessing yes. from above yes. um anywhere else you you go it's never that easy and many of us we take it for granted that you know you would say you you're, you're in sick you go to the hospital you will get services mm. you you know you're supposed to get them um just the other day we were shooting with mm. my uh, with this film crew where i'm i'm working with uh, on, on a film mm. in guwahati la mm. and there was this one butnis uh, man who put out this post that he needed blood uh, his father was sick mm. and uh, you know sitting in that hospital over there mm. talking to that man um and i could see that the worries that you know i could yeah. see it written on his face mm. um and here in bhutan mm. i mean it's just that it was, it was a complicated case mm. and of course again the government had helped blah mm. blah the, the 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 usual thing but it, that doesn't happen anywhere else i mm. mean like we have the government mm. to take care of us um mm. and i would imagine that it is almost a burden mm. on the on the government coffers at mm. least mm. uh it's a, a hell of a lot of uh, expenditure True. um and yet we're still thinking about free mm. services mm. taking it even further mm. i would have imagined that the opposite would have been, you know would would have been the trend mm. where you know you start attaching costs and fees mm. to mm. to to things mm. is there any movement in that direction mm. i think if you look at it you know there is a defined uh, in our earlier conversation about protected by the constitution Plus. which mandates us to provide right. free health services mm. now from tertiary the, the the economics of it you can look at, look at it two ways Plus. now if you have a person diagnosed much later say let's take a example of a cancer diagnosed at third stage then we treat this person we send this person to india for treatment comes back the survival is very short loss nice. so whatever resources we have spent mm-hmm. we have actually technically wasted that right, because right. it in the in in the end the outcome is poor mm-hmm. but then if you can actually one third of that cost if you can actually put in early diagnosis early interventions ah, prevention okay. so you are actually getting more for your money than less for your money Last. so that's the strategy ah. so for a small country where uh, health is Uh, fully funded by the state it is so important to focus uh, uh, on on prevention and early diagnosis so that you have a better outcome of your investment okay so that's the strategy behind of course Lush. i completely agree at some point we need to look at the modality of how we want to finance this free health services because right. it cannot continue mm-hmm. just now as per the constitution anything from head to toe is free mm. but we have to classify these uh, at some point which right. uh, we are actually looking at uh, you know um doing some studies on Lush. it as well in terms of health financing how best to finance our health mm. healthcare services i know there's there like 10000 different things that i want to talk about mm. as far as health is concerned and i know it's it's a vast subject <laughs> and we can talk about so many things i mean like right behind the camera right now uh, dr tendon uh, is there he's been talking about this mobile dental clinic that yes. he's been uh, meaning to do um how my hats off always uh, yeah. to 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 mm. you doc um big fan of him mm. um and you know there are people like him there are other people also you know mm. who 
think you know it's time for private clinics to mm. come up where you know people who can afford it mm. will will go and avail these services and and things like that so i went to 10000 different things mm. I, i i was telling you in a uh, pre show talk mm. also about you know this group of uh, kids who went out to study allopathy mm. and ayurveda ayurvedic, ayurvedic stuff ayurvedic, right yeah all yeah. that stuff and mm. how they find themselves mm. unemployed also mm. so many things to talk about but i have to head back into your playlist quickly mm. Mm. quickly and mm. then we'll come back this is going to be a very quick uh, break mm. uh, this song is uh, one love bob molly mm. um why is that on your playlist oh it reminds me of you know coming from a mountainous country i took a vacation during my college days final year in college uh, we went to caribbean islands and that was my first time seeing the turquoise blue ocean ah and 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 that's the song we i think dance to uh f- celebrating mm. our final year in college so it's a beautiful a, song a as well a milestone <laughs> right right it's a beautiful song and and of course a song by a legendary uh song written composed and sung by a legendary singer yes. uh, bob marley who many people in bhutan kind of see in a wrong way but yeah. Uh, yeah, we won't we won't get into that right anyway so here it is uh, one love by bob marley and we'll come quickly back and have a last uh, 10 minute segment uh, with uh, limbo yes Right um <clears throat> we here on my mixtape on Radio Valley 99.9 FM are heading now into the final segment of uh, today's show mm-hmm. with uh, our guest Limudishin Wangmo the health minister who <clears throat> we've already established as being a clearly independent headstrong person perhaps it's because you're lota mm. your birth sign uh, mm. is is ta is that yeah. you're a tiger yeah. um i've heard people talk about you as the tiger of the family mm. um <laughs> is there a connection do you think i i don't know <laughs> okay um but it is striking to know that you know you are a lota uh. and that probably explains the sense of independence mm. uh, also um But where does this thing come from your collection of artifacts I, i you have <laughs> stuff from all over the place masks from papua new guinea oh. um and a, a very um how strange is it that that a woman should have a sword collection <laughs> a collection of swords <laughs> explain that I, i must ask you where you get the information <laughs> from it's amazing how you, you, you probably have a radio valley ci a <laughs> association affiliated to radio valley but uh, anyway i i really have this thing for all things um i uh, mass in particular one Lust. that i have quite a lot of collection from places i've traveled uh, i like to collect mask um so thing i don't know where it mm. comes from but uh, um i'm a big fan of uh, pasatenzi uh, the the traditional old swords uh, that uh, bhutan made uh, probably in 7 century 7th century so, wow so um, these are very rare um, swords okay. uh, very famous i'm told that uh, the combination of the two metals uh, uh, yes please that, explain that explain yeah, that. this is what i want to hear this is what i want to hear that is something that is not uh, done now right, in today's right. world um, so they they combine two metals yes, last yes. okay so uh, so these are very really impressive gorgeous the craftsmanship is amazing okay it's really you you feel the sword and you you can really you know mm taste the labor yes, of yes yes yes, uh, yes artisans there you know right, so right. it's um that but um i must say my newest to my collection is a uh, bayonet uh, a bayonet yes, right okay uh, made during uh, the first world war ah. uh, so i recently got it at a flea market in in in, in geneva Oh nice nice so, from from the first world war. Yes. Okay. So that's another thing I like to do is right. when I was be a student I used to go around flea markets and right collect okay. these old junks I mean, people don't like. <laughs> no, I I had 
I had, I really, I, really, I really did. I had a collection of knives. Uh -huh. And one of the things that I spent hours and hours and hours and hours doing was just sharpening my knives uh -huh. to the point where, you know, I just have to hold a piece of paper and I just put the knife and the sheer force of gravity would just, you know, tear the paper, <laughs> cut the paper. That's, that, uh, it was something that I loved doing as mm -hmm. well. And I can imagine, you know, a, a man, a guy, a, a male being into, mm -hmm. into knives mm -hmm. and all of that. The swords, and then you're talking about the metals involved in all of mm -hmm. that. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Um, it's how, how strange is that? <laughs> <laughs> that? That is very strange because recently when we went to the flea market, I came back and I asked, uh, you know, there were a group of uh, friends uh, from the mission and I, I just said, what do you think I bought from the flea mm -hmm. market? So everybody says bags or cutleries mm -hmm. or plates or things <laughs> like that. And suddenly I show them the knife and <laughs> jaw dropping <laughs> experience, expressions on their faces. <laughs> so it is, I think it is very unusual usual but, uh, but i'm happy with it so yeah what oh, i yeah. have i'm uh, i i enjoy them right I'm, right you know Oh, I, I understand mm. perfectly. Uh, not perfectly, <laughs> but I mean, uh, completely. I, I really do understand. Um, there's something about knives that, 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 uh, and swords, yeah, that uh, really captures my imagination as well. Um, and uh, it has, in fact, been one of my dreams that one day I must have a really, really good, genuine katana. Uh, but let's see. Uh, right now, uh, I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, an amplifier, a guitar mm -hmm. amplifier that is, by the way, called a katana also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, last limbo. Uh, fascinating. Uh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. And like I said, again, when it comes to health, um, there's so many things that we would have liked to have talked mm -hmm. about. But uh, unfortunately, we're we are out, out of time. And I know the, the many of people, you, uh, many of you had written in on my post uh, and suggested you know, certain mm -hmm. things that uh, we could talk about. Um, but like I said, this is my mixtape. Uh, mm. We like to talk issues, of mm. course, but mm. we want to get you know to the core of the personality mm. more than than uh, the issues themselves. Mm. Uh, while the issues are important, we mm. consider the personality mm. as being the star of mm. the show, more or less, which is why we decided we'll talk a lot about uh, you as well. Mm. In any case, Limbo, fascinating. I imagine, you know, if, if we had the time, mm. we could sit here an, another hour, another two hours, and we'd, we'd still uh, yap away. Mm. But I know your time is precious as mm. well, and, and so is ours. Mm. Uh, and I have to say again, this past one hour has been a fascinating journey already. Mm. Uh, and I know that right now I am in the company of somebody who is extraordinary, really is extraordinary. Um, and <laughs> uh, we couldn't possibly have established that in a more um, appropriate fashion than with your f final song on, on your playlist that we will play while you were here. Mm -hmm. How does somebody in your position and your age get into Justin Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> mistletoe by Justin Bieber. Yeah. Please, I'm curious now. <laughs> and I'm sure my listeners and my viewers are as well. Uh, Justin Bieber and Mistletoe, please explain this. Why is this on your playlist? It's such a beautiful song. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, when you, when you talk yeah. about art, there's last, no age to it. Last, Every time last. I... I ask this, okay. right? If I say, oh, why don't you play Justin Bieber? Everybody gives me this look like, oh... You, you Justin Bieber doesn't <laughs> but I guess it's also you know uh, a reflection f of who I uh, am really uh, really expect I mean, the unexpected exactly I mean <laughs> you, you you go you go from swords uh, and bayonets <laughs> to Justin yes. Bieber yeah you're a teeny bopper at heart <laughs> yes, yes so yes. so it is uh, uh, R is not enough to figure the Chenong Mo out yeah, obviously I I that is sure. the conclusion I here I'm sure I'm sure, I am sure there's so many <laughs> pieces of this puzzle that yes. uh, uh, we would love to delve into yes. and dig deeper into uh, right but okay so <laughs> we, we will leave you all with uh, Mistletoe uh, by Justin Bieber and yes <laughs> we have clearly established an R is not enough, enough. to figure out this yes. normal definitely uh, you're one of those personalities that I think uh, we will have to have a special show for <laughs> we will have two hours or three hours I, still, still then I don't I, I imagine we wouldn't be able to, to uncover um, you know, e e even the surface of who, who uh, this wrong is. But yes, thank you so much for being with us here today. It's, it's been a wonderful uh, hour. I'm going to leave you with this uh, final opportunity to say whatever you want uh, to our listeners and our viewers out there. If there's something that you'd like to mm. share with them, mm. this is your moment. Um, I think nothing in particular, but I would like to thank Soup. Uh, 
I, I can't imagine the hour went by so fast. Yes. Uh, I I think this is an excellent show and we must do much. it more with more personalities right. um so then people get to know each other. Lots. Once you know each other then then the conversation starts right. and then the relationship builds. Um, right. So I hope you'll have more of these shows uh, and I wish the team here uh, my very best wishes Thank you very and much, our sir. listeners um If you want to know the chan I think you need more than an hour so I would end with that thank right. you very much right and I would <laughs> agree entirely like, that yes you are this enigma that that I mean I really feel like uh, uncovering now you know uh, so many points that have come up that have clearly established you as being quite a different and an extraordinary person that uh, who by the way we are proud to know that you know as a minister right now and in the right position we wish you the very best of luck in everything that you do i understand you have so much responsibility on your hands but i do believe that uh we are confident i i do believe you have the confidence as well to to carry off your responsibilities with gusto uh and with the um, aplomb So thank you very much and uh, good luck with everything that you do la. Thank you. Thank Lass, you. Thank please you. remember while we wrap it up please remember that uh, this show is rebroadcast tomorrow and uh, day after tomorrow so Saturday and Sunday on Radio Valley 99.9 FM um if you missed the show and you would like to listen to it uh, to it in its entirety you can always catch uh, the SoundCloud link which will be shared on the Radio Valley Facebook page and of course for all of you YouTubers out there who are into the show and thank you so much uh, for being there um we assure you that the youtube uh, upload will be done very uh, soon for the moment as a parting note let me just make a few announcements go cup volume 5 is happening on the 20th and 21st of july that's uh, tomorrow and day after Uh, tomorrow and day after yes and uh, no better person uh, than dr tenzin to confirm that uh, who uh, is the man behind go cup uh, by the way asha pasa is a mobile app that is launching soon on google play and app store and the the app generally it basically provides a platform for service uh, seekers to connect with service providers so it's like an advertising platform more or less somewhat but it's an app also mojo park would like to announced that uh, it has a live band performing every day of the week except of course on on Tuesdays when it is closed uh another announcement from Radio Valley is that if you can identify the songs that Radio Valley plays twice in a day or three times in a day uh you can win cash uh, awards from uh, rewards from Radio Valley so if you can tell the song that is played twice you win 500 newtons uh, and if you can tell the song that is played uh, played three times then you win 3000 newtons uh, so to, to take part in the fan of the day cash reward you will have to call 199 uh, from 7 pm to 8 pm and karmakora by the way uh, we just uh, karmakora offered a hoodie and a t-shirt uh, to our guest uh, today to lembo uh, they would like to announce that uh, Karma Cora t-shirts and hoodies are no longer available at Legends because Legends is closed uh, but Karma Cora is now available at Shopper's store. That being said, let me also just announce that tomorrow again Lembo you will be there. You are the chief guest at uh, the Bhutan's at Bhutan's first national weightlifting championship uh, that will be held at uh, Luga uh, Hall tomorrow. Uh, that's coming up besides the Go Cup and also on Tuesday The Bhutanese senior national team, football team, plays its first international. I mean, we've never seen our senior girls uh, in action. And this is the chance. No? So on Tuesday, they play Sri Lanka. Come out there in your colors and uh, support our girls. Our Dragon Boys have done us proud in many ways. Have disappointed us also uh, uh, sometimes. But yeah, they're learning. They're getting better. And, and the Dragon Girls, I'm sure, will go through a similar journey. But the difference is, what can we do? give to them when they represent us and the best thing that we can do is to just show our faces there and make uh, them hear our voices in uh, support right so just want to make these announcements right so it's a wrap here on uh, my mixtape here on Radio Valley 99.9 FM have a brilliant weekend uh, and a lot of food for thought for, uh, that came from our guest uh, uh, Limbo Dichinwongo right and uh, have a good day
Oh, low in an alley You've always got a 